I must keep the streak up. All right. Does this count, Jason? Does this count? I am straddling the wall a bit, but this is a handstand. I did it. I kept up with the streak of Jason's ridiculous requests. Uh. All right, what's up everyone? Happy Wednesday, how y'all doing? Ooh, man, handstands hurt on the wrist. Bad enough that I basically have arthritis, but yeah, that's ouch on the wrist. How's everyone doing? Oh, okay. So he's gonna chill for a bit. Um, let's see. I did, we're gonna be testing a mic on stream today. Got the package right here, uh, and then we're just gonna do wherever the chat takes us. Cami Hudson with her, or with their rather, sorry, with their 11 month uh, membership message. But how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All right. You are her. Okay. I, do, I didn't want to assume. I have assumed incorrectly before and have been corrected. So I try to be pretty careful about that. And just to be respectful to what people would like to be uh, addressed by. So, okay. So now I know. Okay, Stream Zone says, I would have passed out and break my neck trying to do the handstand. Uh, I used to be able to do a unsupported handstand, but that was many years ago. I have not been working on handstand abilities, you know, in the my recent years. So... <laughs> Uh, oh, music. Gotta get the music going. Give me one second. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, why you do this? Gotta get that stream beats going. <clears throat> Hi, five chip There we go. Banana asks, hey Danny, have any good recommendations for budget keeps? Honestly, I'm not a keyboard person. I could be happy with and I have used, like, remember the Red Dragon uh, keyboards and stuff like that? that was, the Red Dragon was the first mechanical keyboard I've ever reviewed. Let me see if I can find it on a... Uh... But, like, I I'm okay with most keyboards. Uh... For my own personal keyboard, I wanted wireless capabilities. So that's why I went with what I did. But let me see, nerd on the budget, Red Dragon, man. This was many a years ago, seven years ago. Holy crap. And this was when, I don't remember when budget mechanical keyboards hit the scene or like hit Amazon and stuff like that. But $40 for, uh, you know, a full mechanical blue switch keyboard. Uh, at the time, I feel like around 2016 is when I noticed it popping off. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could even be okay with using like one of these keyboards full time if if I if I had to. But you know, because I do have uh, the ability to afford and to choose, I just use the uh, the Keychron. Uh, well, shoot, which keyboard is this from Keychron anyways? I have to look it up again. I forget the model. That's how much of a not mechanical keyboard person I am. So if anyone in the chat has a recommendation for Banana, uh, let them know. But yeah, what is my... I keep on... I always forget the model because it's not like I ever have to refer to it often. All products. I think it's the K4. Is it the... K4. It's a 90%-ish... Or is it? 
Yeah, K4. I thought it was the K4. Yeah, but this is what I use. I mean, this is $79 and it's got wireless capabilities. Uh It's got it's got Bluetooth and it's from it's not like just some random no, you know, a random no name brand from Amazon and stuff like that. Keychron is actually pretty well known. Uh, I, I would say they have a pretty good reputation uh, with regards to mechanical keyboards in this space. So uh, for 80 bucks, I think this is a pretty sleek, very compact, you know, you get your full numpad. I, I love this keyboard. I, there's no reason for me to switch keyboards except to try other keyboards. But in terms of the features, uh, you know, I think this is pretty much the end game for me. I'm not into like four or five hundred dollar keyboards and super custom either. Jason Whitmer says the twenty dollar one I bought for a video last month. I think that was the full setup video that he did. It's pretty good. Yeah, dude. And let's do. All right, we're gonna before we get into the mic stuff while we're just chilling and hanging out with people. Let's take a look on Amazon and let's see what the cheapest mechanical keyboard we can find is. Dude, every time! This is an incognito window, you see how I'm not even logged in? Why? Why is there always some lingerie in the front page of my incognito Amazon? Like, why? Uh, Alright, mechanical keyboard. I mean, just by looking up... Um... Yeah, I mean, there's plenty on like around thirty bucks already, but we're gonna do we're gonna do our favorite thing, which is based on the T-shirt that uh, I released, one of my merch, sorting from low to high. But when you do that, you get a bunch of garbage that aren't actually mechanical keyboards. So we have to kind of go through the filters a bit. But even then, it's gonna give us a bunch of keycaps. What is the actual like see a silicone cover and stuff like that? This is what where it gets annoying. Um, PC gaming keyboards, yeah, we'll go with that, but even then, it's still going to give us, alright, so we actually have keyboards here, the issue is, a lot of these cheap keyboards, it says 13 bucks, but it's $20 shipping, so that effectively makes it 30, like 34 bucks right there, uh, so we're actually going to go, ooh, this one is $18.99 with $4 coupon, okay, it's a 60% mechanical keyboard, 68 key, uh, and there, dude, you can get this for $15, so it's 19 bucks right here, $18.99, and you apply the instant savings coupon. Is this wireless? Every image that they put on these, they, like, never show the wires. Uh, ooh, it does use USB Type-C, though, that, you, you like to see that instead of micro USB. Don't forget Prime deals next week is, oh, yeah, Amazon, uh, Another Prime thingy, right? It's what is this thing coming up? Uh, Amazon Prime October. Is that what it is? Prime Day deals. So they just have two Prime Days now, or did they move it from July? Was there a Prime Day? Amazon Second Prime Day. Okay, so this is the second Prime Day that they're having. October 10th, when is that? That's gonna be Tuesday, next Tuesday. Yeah, so there was one in July, okay. <laughs> you like to see that, what's up, Chris? Uh, dude, I forgot, G give me one second. I'm getting too ahead of myself. That handstand got all the blood rushing to my head and got me all adrenaline up. That I forgot to say hi to everybody. What is up, Stang2007, first in the chat today, followed by Coalition Gaming Chris, who was second. Then we got Jason, who asked me to do the handstand at the beginning of the stream, and I did it. So I am four for four right now. Let's keep the streak up. Jason, don't get too ridiculous with the requests, because I almost didn't do the handstand today had I not found that that portion of my uh basement that i could actually lean against because there's not many surfaces that i can lean against down here because i have so much crap on the walls but i, I got you this time jason we got extreme zone 987 as we see every week what is up what is up kale 130 um we got and i was mentioning at the beginning of the stream melissa currently has covid 
She tested positive this morning. We went to a wedding on Saturday. Um, and then just a couple of days ago, the bride and groom messaged everybody and saying, hey, uh, someone reportedly had COVID or tested positive after the wedding. So we don't know like what the origins or I don't know who it was. They didn't like oust the person, but we thought we were fine. Um, but Melissa has been feeling kind of crappy for the last couple of days. She tested this morning and she has COVID. So um yeah that's we were just talking about that because extreme zone was feeling not too good i had i tested negative and i'm feeling good i don't know if i'm gonna eventually get covid in the next couple of days or week here because since the wedding me and melissa you know we we were you know we live in the same house we share the same bed we share food all the time we share utensils drinking glasses all that stuff i don't kiss her though because that's gross but uh you know you could if she had it in that time, I should theoretically get it, but we'll see. Uh, we got R. Flett, who is looking for tech drama and gossip, but could not find any. The tech drama has been kind of on the DL ever since the whole Linus thing, which Linus is all back up and running, so that's good to see. Uh, we got Scooter. What is up, Scooter? Um, let me see what else we got. Uh, we got Jonathan Tolbert, which I'm going to replay because he actually joined membership during the pre-show. So Jonathan Tolbert, thank you for becoming a nerd on Big Budget channel member. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. We got Mod Kevin going in the house. What is up, Kevin? Always good to see you. Uh, so I think I got most... <laughs> NG Youngboy, what's up, what's up? All right, let me get caught back up with the chat now. Uh, it's the second Prime Day to compete with people who wait for Black Friday. Uh, let's see. So that's gonna be what days is it? Can is it gonna? It's gonna happen ten and eleven. So next week, Wednesday the eleventh. Uh, we could look. We could actually look for Amazon Prime Day's deals number two. Though, hopefully, there are some deals left on the second day. I think that's how they usually do it, right? It's not like Amazon only has the best deals day one. I think there are staggered releases and some deals that they hold off for the second day. So, I guess next Wednesday, we can take a look at some of the deals and talk about some of the stuff that went on sale for Tuesday and if anybody picked anything up. But, yeah. So, that, 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 that'd be good. Uh, what's up, Nathan Tasker? How you doing? How you doing? We keep get we get lucky with them falling on Wednesdays. I I mean, whenever Newegg has their fantastic sales or a fantastic week, and Amazon has these things, Prime Amazon Prime Days or Prime Weeks. Uh, I love it when it falls on the stream days because everyone's excited to talk about what kind of deals they picked up, and we can look at them live together. Uh, but going back to the this keyboard, I'm gonna link it right now. Give me one second. Let me get a short link for this. Uh, and of course, he <laughs> affiliate links, uh, but let me just get the discord affiliate link out here. So if you guys want to take a look at this keyboard as well, but okay, let's take a look at what it's loot 4.5, 400 ratings. I'm, I'm about to buy this just to have, but this is USB-C wired, but is it actually, is it just a detachable cable? Is there a built-in battery for it to be wireless? I don't think it would be, but let me see. Wireless would be way too... No, it was giving keyboard is wired. Not the wireless keyboard. Okay. So, it is not a wireless keyboard. It just has a detachable cable, which is pretty nice so in case the cable gets damaged. Or, like, if you were transported around, you don't have a stem sticking out of it that could get damaged. Um, dude, this teal color, is that the cheapest one? Wow. So, they have different colors here. Different colorways or skews uh black is 19.99 dude i might pick up this one just to see i mean for 15 dollars, i gotta do it in my other window give me one second if they don't tell you the switch type it's usually mechanical feeling i mean they have a picture of a blue switch right here uh, or unless somebody asked uh no, <laughs> I think he meant he doesn't kiss his... No, I was joking and saying that I never kiss my wife. 
Of course I kiss my wife. I was just joking when I said I don't kiss her. But I, you're right, Extreme Zone. I do not kiss her once I have found out that she has COVID and is sick. I think it might be too late, though. We will see. If next week I'm, like, bedridden then and I cancel stream, then you will know. But, uh, okay, when it comes to this mechanical keyboard, I am going to pick it up. And it should get here by Friday, so I will have it for next week for us to unbox on stream and use. Which, by the way, for today's unboxing, I do have this test bench. Not this test bench. This uh, setup right here. So that we can unbox everything right here. But we will get to that in a second. Uh, let me... <clears throat> oh, and by the way... If y'all have not n uh, heard, Tech, I <laughs> Tech, Brett Mike. from UFD Tech is doing his Cannonball stream, Cannonball 2023. If you guys have not been watching, please show your support, tune in. I know I'm streaming right now. Today's stream is actually going to be pretty short, um, but. Uh, if you guys could show support and even just have it running also in the background to support to support Brett and his team and what they're doing uh, for his they're raising awareness and for raising money for his son's Syngap 1 rare disease, uh, I would greatly appreciate that. So if you guys didn't know, Brett is doing his drive from New York to LA. He's done it for how many years now? Uh, a number of years now. So yeah, be sure to support him on and his team, everyone riding with him on their long trip across the country. Uh, so I just wanted to give a quick shout out to them, to any of my viewers out there who was not aware of this. Uh, so yeah, what did Brett do with his hair? So Brett has these challenges, right? Uh, and every time, so they have raised thirty-one thousand dollars so far. But when they do this, um, where is the Brett's first eyebrow gets shaved off at 150k? But wild haircut for Brett because they passed 25,000. They shaved his head, left patches everywhere, and dyed his hair. So yeah, it's a fun stream. Uh, I submitted a quick snippet for it. So if you're watching the stream, you might see my clip uh, pop up throughout at some point of the stream. So definitely go support Brett uh, and what he's doing over there. Um, okay, I'm gonna buy this keyboard right now. I keep getting distracted, but I'm gonna buy this. Add to cart. I'm gonna let, I'll let you know the total with the $4 coupon after I check out. It will be, so minus the $4 saving is $14.99 plus tax in Seattle is, oh my god, tax in Seattle is like 11% or where I live is, the tax on $15 is 157 which is like 10 point something percent so my total is 1656 so 1656 for a mechanical keyboard i mean how can i go wrong with this let me check out uh let me i need to choose my credit card and not okay use this payment method boom i have placed my order so we will check this out next week on stream. I will wait to unbox it and everything. Hey, what up, Shauna? You have not seen my clip yet. They may be doing some more of that tomorrow. Do you know how many clips how many clips you have seen? And you're probably not watching it like constantly, right? So you might have missed it. Because given the length of the stream being like, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of minutes. Getting a couple minute clips here and there, it's, it would be easy to miss if you go like use the restroom or get busy for a little bit. But um, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay. So. Yeah, let's see what, here. We'll, we'll look at what my, so Seattle sales tax. Seattle sales tax is 10.25. Um. What am I doing? I didn't even undo this. Okay, so that's Seattle, but I don't live actually in Seattle. Linwood is 10.6! I live in the city of Linwood, and the tax is higher than Seattle. Oh, man. Yeah, what? What is the highest... Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, what is the highest tax rate? Match... 
Match is a winner of one of the Galax keyboards that he won from a couple of, I think it was Christmas, it was a holiday giveaway with Galax. So Match still uses the Galax keyboard. Nice. Glad to hear that it's serving you well. You have 13% in Ontario. Okay, that's pretty high. <laughs> Pay a high sales tax to be a coastal elite or live in a normal city with a lot of gun town and truck driving rednecks. Choose, says Jason. What is the, let's see, Houston uh, sales tax? What is their sales tax? 8.25. Oh, man. Ugh. So, we're, speaking of sales tax, remember how we were talking about iPhones recently? I can't get iPhone 15 out of my mind. Like the USB-C plus the fact that uh, I, ha I haven't bought, I have not bought a new phone since the OnePlus 2. Every phone I've ever bought after the OnePlus 2, which came out in, what year was the OnePlus 2? OnePlus 2 release date. So the OnePlus 2 came out in 2015, yeah. so. Ever since the OnePlus 2, every phone I bought have been used. Like, I bought on Craigslist or OfferUp and stuff like that. But I've been thinking a lot about the, one, uh, the iPhone 15 ever since it came out. With my maybe transition over to iOS and everything like that. So, if... Because Melissa uh, wants to upgrade her phone too. She's still on the 12. So, it's been four generations for her. So, I mean, that's pretty reasonable, I would think, to, to upgrade phones. So we were thinking if we're both going to buy iPhones and there's none in the used market. Don't worry. I looked. Anyone who's selling an iPhone in the used market is selling it for more expensive because I don't know. They're trying to scalp it or something like that. But uh, if we were to buy two iPhones and Melissa's iPad is also kind of getting pretty old and she wants to get into illustrations with the Apple Pencil. So I, uh, I might get her that for like Christmas. Then it would make sense to drive down to Portland, Oregon where there is no sales tax because if you spend like you know, two grand, that's like $200 saved. Uh, get, like, it, it wouldn't even be that much in gas money with my car anyways. Uh, plus, we could, you know, do other shopping or eat in Portland at restaurants that we don't get a chance to eat at often. So yeah, that's what we were thinking about maybe doing that. Join the iPhone bros, Jason says. You'll end up loving it. I don't doubt it. I think it'll take some getting used to because I've been on I've been on Oxygen OS, which is like pretty much, you know, uh, just like pure Android. Uh, so, um, I think it would take some getting used to, but I know, I feel like when I see people use iPhone certain apps and stuff, it just seems way smoother because the apps are way more, it's optimized, like when they optimize for iPhones, that they're just doing that, right? It just works on all the iPhones pretty well. But when you make apps for Android, because they have such, like, they have different hardware in it and from different brands and stuff like that, I, I feel like that's one of the reasons why apps just aren't typically as good on Android as uh, on Apple. You probably research. Yeah, we did research. Uh, Melissa's <laughs> iPad is not compatible with the uh, Gen 1 pencil, unfortunately. And then she tried to buy a generic pencil that said it was supposed to be good on Amazon, you know, like a $30 generic uh, stylus pencil, and it was just horrible. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Let's see what people are saying. Try an iPhone with an Apple Watch. It's an unbeatable combo. So I think I'd be okay without the watch for a little bit. Um, I'm not, like... I'm not too crazy about wearing and recharging like two things. You gotta like every night plug in your phone and do the wristwatch and everything. And I just don't typically like wearing uh, wristwatches like out. So as as useful as it would be to be able to get text notifications and take calls and stuff without pulling your phone out of the pocket. I mean, I think the, the Apple Watch is expensive enough for me to be like, yeah, I don't need that. I think I want the, the core phone, maybe down the line. But I think the phone would be a nice, uh, a nice upgrade. Joe fourteen hundred says, "Are you gonna get the iPhone fifteen Pro Max?" No, I would. I mean, if anything, the the Pro Max is way too big. I, the Pro is also very expensive. Like the iPhone fifteen Pro. What is this thing? It starts from a thousand dollars 
versus the non-pro, which starts from, let me see. Oh my goodness, where's the price on this thing? I think we just we just looked at it last week, but uh Yeah, the 128 is going to be what kills me because I have 256 on my phone now, so cutting my storage in half means I have to offload pictures and video way more often because I do take a lot of picture and video with my phone. Um where's the prices? There we go. 15 Pro starting at 9.99. How do I choose not Pro? Like just 15 normal. That that's like 7.99, right? Yeah, it's 7.99. So $200 difference. I'm still thinking I'm still thinking about it. So uh between the two, it's like do I do you, because you use your phone typically for what three, four, maybe even five years before upgrading? Is it worth spending the two hundred dollars now and just having the best phone that you can for the next four years? So just get okay. No, 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 no. USB C alone, so I can keep all my cables and not have to have a mix because I have I have a lot of like devices that use USB C. Like we're talking about power banks, uh, wireless earbuds, uh, like lights and like. Uh, photography lights and stuff like that. So much of my stuff uses USB-C that I I just want one type of cable in my studio and home and not have to deal with lightning cable. So even if the iPhone 15 was a little bit more expensive but the exact same specs than the 13, I would pay a little bit more just to get the USB-C. But it's not the same as the iPhone 14 or 13. The camera's better. Like... Everything inside it is better. What? Is it? Am, am I uninformed? Is the iPhone 13 same spec as 15? I'm pretty sure it's not. Oh, uh, it's USB 2, so you're talking about the transfer speeds, right? As opposed to the uh, the quick charge. What's up, Damien? Do I care about fast charging? Well, how fast is the 15 Pro charge? So, iPhone 15 charge speed. I think I'm good with, like, uh, like, wait 15 like 20 to 30 watts i would be good with that that's what my oneplus is right now um so what is the the 15 non-pro charging speed it it's saying it's 20 watts i think 20 watts i would be okay with I would be okay with 20 watt charging. Where did they even put that in the official specs on the i on the iPhone website? Charge. Can I look for nope? Can't look for the word charge. Oh wait. Uh USB C okay, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, same cable. Uh-huh. Uh they don't 20. It's looking like 20 watt? Charger in the fine print. This is the starting point where no becomes an Apple channel. Oh my goodness. Yeah, right. No, 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 no. I would never use an Apple computer. So any Macs or anything like that. Um, but phones is a different story because I had... I had the iPhone 3G and the iPhone 4 back in the day, which was like, what, 2009, 2010-ish time frame, I think. So, I mean, I'm, <laughs> the iOS was so different back then. So, um, I've had Apple phones m m over a decade ago, but you know, maybe it's time to go back. What's up, Demon Mitt? I know channel, I know, right? 
If I made three videos that got 200k each in a row and they were all Apple Vids, would you pivot? No. It's just because phones and laptops are just not my thing. Like, unless, yeah, no. I guess there, you could make, um, like, PCs that run iOS or that r runs uh, Mac OS. Sorry, not iOS. Uh, that I bet you there's a YouTube channel that does that, but... 20 watts is quite slow, but it does prolong battery health. Yeah, so, um, I mean, oh, I mostly charge my phone overnight, and because I've got my, my man purse, my, my cross body sling, I also always, now that I'm out, I also always carry uh, a battery bank with me. And yo, these battery banks that have the built-in cables, these are so legit, like, I wish every battery bank came with a built-in cable so you don't have to deal. This has all the cables. This has micro, this has uh, micro, lightning, and USB-C. But yeah. So I always have a battery with me in case I do get low, you know, uh, for whatever reason. But in terms of having to charge super fast, I, I don't know. I don't think that is a huge necessity. But maybe I might regret the decision and like... A year or two if I do end up getting the, the not pro do I have an EDC video I do not have an EDC video because I don't think I'm I've, I feel like it's mostly like the cell phone and like mobile device channels that do EDC type videos uh, I, I th I've not seen at least I don't think I've seen a like PC gaming PC PC builds like tower PC channel do edc videos which if you guys don't know what edc it's not edc like the what is it las vegas uh electric electro daisy carnival or whatever the edm concert uh edc is everyday carry which is like what do you carry every day what's in like your, your what's your wallet your keychain your your backpack what's in that thing uh and which i have not done all right i did miss a question earlier though Oh, uh, where's Match? Match says, Danny, I know you like old games like Chrono Trigger and such like that, but do you collect old games and consoles? No, I, I actually don't collect old consoles and stuff. My brother and I, because growing up, we did share, you know, whatever consoles we did have. He actually has all of our old consoles. Like, we're talking Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo, N64, all the games, controllers, and stuff like that, which I'm fine with him holding on to it. I could always go grab it from him if I need to. He lives, like, 15 minutes away. But I don't actively collect them just because it's so expensive. And, um, I mean, I do collect, like, I collect WoW things, like World of Warcraft uh, collectibles. But for consoles and stuff like that, there there's an alternative to it. Which, like, if you want to play on a console, uh, or if you want to play a console game and you can't find it, you can just emulate it, which... The moralities of emulation, right? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have the space and uh, and patience and storage for it. Like, because if you get into that, you get you start racking up all the cartridges and all that stuff. And unless you put it on display, which I'm I'm I don't have any more room to put things on display. Everything that I want to display is already like put up. So yeah, um, I just never got into retro collecting like consoles and stuff like that. I heard emulation is okay as long as you own the original game or something. Yeah, I'm actually not sure about the gray, that gray area. Uh, whether, like, I, I've heard that too. If you own the game, a physical copy of the game, then it is technically okay to, I think, make a copy of it. But I think it's illegal to distribute it. So if you, in that sense, if you go onto a website, even though you own the game and you download uh, someone else's emulated copy to use then i think that's considered not okay if anybody cares but i don't think anybody cares because there are plenty of emulation websites that have not been taken down so but nintendo might come after you yeah okay all right so we have been chilling for somehow over 30 minutes and i'm supposed to unbox this mic so that we can test the sound quality and uh so wireless mic why do i need one Remember, you have, no, you know during the streams when I uh, sometimes get up and walk away to like that corner of the studio or like I go show you something upstairs with my, my phone and this mic, this mic right here, this mic sits here 
and you can't hear me when I go away or any when I've done other streams uh, where I'm not in front of the computer, like when I set up the the mouse mat wall or when I'm when I was building stuff um, like the those shelves back there. Uh, having a wireless mic that's attached to you is like. It's pretty important to keep the sound quality, especially since the distance changes from me and the mic. Um, not only that, uh, when I go to like the Craigslist ride alongs and stuff like that, using a normal mic like this, when I get away from the camera, like when the camera's in the front seat and I am recording conversation from the trunk, you can't hear it that well. So I've been looking for a wireless mic for a while and then this company ends up emailing me saying, hey, we have a wireless mic. I didn't, I didn't even reach out to them. I was just looking at different potentials for new wireless mics because the last one I had, uh, it has a distance issue where once I get like even eight or nine feet away, it starts getting static issue, which kind of uh, ruins the audio. So this company reached out, they're, the company's named Fulame, and they're like, hey, we have this mic. Uh, and I was like, wow, uh, I'm actually looking in the market for a wireless mic right now. So I'll check you guys out and if it's good, then I'll use it. So, I'm going to unbox this, not that, but here we go. So, I'm going to unbox this, we're going to test the sound quality on stream, and you guys can tell me if it sounds good or not. Uh, yeah, wireless mic for streaming is very useful because if you clip it to yourself, the distance, no matter where you walk around or go to, the distance between you and the mic will remain the same. So, the volume to the audience will always be the same. So, here is... And sorry for the shakiness, right now, this camera on top is not a webcam. This is actually, I put my a spare phone up here with uh, an OBS, uh, Droid Cam OBS. So this is a camera right here that you guys are seeing. Uh, where is it? Right there, yeah. Or this is a this is a phone that I'm using as a webcam. So all right, here it is, the Full Aim X5. I'm gonna unbox this and then we're gonna hook it up and see how this thing sounds. Uh, okay, let's see. My address is not showing. So this address, good, good looking out though. So this address, I'll show it again because it is not my address. So this address is my PO box, effectively. Where is it at? Come on. Yeah, so you, you can see this address in every single one of my video and stream descriptions. This is where people can send fan mail to and stuff like that. So that's where I also get companies to send products to and not my own house so that I can just pick them up there. So yeah. But good looking out though. I, I appreciate you because if that was my home address, then that would be bad because then I would have just doxed myself. But yeah, so let's unbox this. But sorry for the shakiness because I've got this mic or this arm and it because it's so cantilevered, any like sudden shakes or vibrations kind of rumble it a bit like here let me show you see it's because it's not usually when i do this it's attached to a different table and not the one that i'm actually using so okay um let's see dimitri says i picked up a rode wireless me it's pretty good for vlogging stuff a rode wireless me i'm not sure if i've heard of that First wireless microphone. Is that for mobile? Specifically? Compact wireless. A lot of the Rode mics have like very similar looking square bodies and stuff. So it is hard for me to um, to distinguish them. Okay. So this opens like this. Oh, it's a, it's a magnetic. Dude, this is some nice packaging. Not like packaging is any indication of quality of product, but when stuff has nice packaging like this, like a magnetic flap, what I do is I save it and I put like other computer stuff in it because this is just like a nice box. But all right, let's 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 take a look at this. All right, so we got, we've got the, uh, here's the case. So this is like a battery recharging case. You can put it back, you can put the mic and the receiver back in here to, to charge if it's low on battery. So we do have USB-C right there. USB-C and here's, here they are. Okay, wow, right when I open it, they actually just turned on. All right, what's the battery level on this thing? So 
One thing that my other wireless mic did not have was digital indicators, which, uh, Jason, does your Hollyland, uh, Lark mic have, uh, indicators like this? It's pretty nice when it's digital and, uh, instead of like completely, uh, like this with no display, but okay. So, so this does have, where's the battery levels on everything seems somewhat charged. And here's the actual mic itself. That you attach yourself and this this has this is a magnet so let me test this out so magnets are awesome because let me see oh yeah wow okay so this is my gopro magnet plate but yeah so i could just wear here let me show so for something like this if i don't want to clip it to my shirt because it gives it that weird wrinkle and stuff so i use if you guys have seen my recent videos i have a gopro necklace mount that I wear like this so that's how it sticks out of my chest like where's my GoPro so yeah so I wear that and then whoops I put it on the wrong side for the GoPro but it just goes like that so that's how I do my my footage for the on the go stuff instead now I don't remember when I used to wear the backpack that was because I needed like a GoPro shoulder strap mount but now I just do this necklace thing with a GoPro right in the middle um right here so i'm i could use this magnet plate also if i wanted to just attach a mic to it just like that or you can move the magnet plate like to the side and attach the mic like that so this is pretty cool um yeah magnets how do they work but i think i think everything should just have magnets uh designed into them and like the iphone with their magsafe stuff i recently was looking into that and that seems really awesome how come every phone does not have something similar um but yeah so let me go back to this other view real quick um so there's that we're gonna plug this in in a second see what the sound quality is so they also have these uh where is it so you can, wow, this receiver versus the mic. This is the receiver. This is the mic. In terms of, I don't have that big of hands, right? Like, here, what, what's the... Here, here's it next to a GoPro, just so you can get an idea of the size of these things. So that's like the size comparison. Or if you want to see my giant toenail clipper that I use to clip all my nails, that's... What are we going to compare the size to? Here's a OnePlus 6. Uh, here's my OnePlus 6 right here with the cat thing and my my uh, my unredeemed McDonald's medium fries from what? What's the date on that? 2018. I missed out back in 2018 when they were doing the monopolies. I missed out on redeeming these fries. But yeah, so in terms of the size, these things are pretty compact. So let me see. If I can get this, uh, test. All right. So we do have sound coming in here. Let me, all right. So I'm going to switch. So we're going to check out the sound quality. I'm not even talking in this yet. I'm still talking to here, but so this is the deity mic that I use for all my like on the go footage when I have my, and when I go to conventions and stuff like that. Uh, this is like my interviewing mic and stuff like that. So let me let you hear the sound quality of this and then we're going to switch it out to the wireless mic and then you can get an idea. So right now we're on the NZXT capsule. NZXT capsule right here is what I use every single stream. So we're on that right now, but I'm going to switch it to this. All right, so now we're on this deity mic. Uh, let me, let me turn the background music off right now. How does this sound actually? So I can't really set, I, I'm super quiet. You actually sound good. You just need to boost the DB. So unfortunately this deity mic normally, like, so there's the pro version of this mic where there's a knob. I can't easily boost this without going into... OBS settings and let me see advanced audio properties. Bah, 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 bah. Let me let's see. Let me boost it by six dB. How does that, how's that sound? Uh, aux, 
All right, so I boosted it, but I don't know how much different it sounds. Plus 15, you think, would be good? All right, let me do that. Plus 15. Hopefully it doesn't kill the quality. I wonder if that's... Is that better now? Actually, yeah. Oof. There's a huge range with this mic. And we're just directly... I think I'm, like, peaking. This is much better. Like, is it too loud? On the... On OBS, it seems like... I'm constantly reaching like the max full red bars. It's a bit loud. Okay, yeah, I figured. Yeah, so I think it would be better if I went to like 10. All right, so this should be better. Now, even if I get excited and do plosives, I'm not going to go much higher than about negative 6 dB, which is what people use for YouTube videos and things like that. Okay, so that's what this sounds like. So let me see if I can get... Which I apologize sometimes... Here, actually, let me switch back over and get this set up before I show you what this sounds like. Because I don't want to plug things in and it has like very loud, scratchy noises and stuff. So let me switch back over. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to switch over. Now we're back over to NZXT capsule. So that's what this one sounded like. Now I'm going to plug in this test. I have not done anything yet. Uh, let me see. Hello, test one, two, okay. Test. Oh no, I can't, it's not working. It detects, it's detecting it down. Oh, oh, I think we're good, okay. All right, I think we are good with this one. So I'm gonna just put this right here. Let me twist this around. I'm just going to wear this right here, and I'm going to turn up the volume on here. All right, test one, two. I think we should be... I'm going to switch right now. All right, so I'm on this now. It seems like it's a little quiet. Would you say it's a little quiet? So I need to up the gain on this now uh, 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 to about 15, which is what you said earlier. So now at 15... um. Let's see, so I'm still only getting to about negative 10 decibels for this. Sounds so far away. Yeah, maybe I need to get this here. I'm just going to clip this to my shirt. All right, now that it's clipped to my shirt, it still seems like it's pretty, sounds really harsh. Oof, that's not a good sign for them then. All right. All right, we're just going to test right here. In my opinion, it doesn't sound that good. Oof. I, so I can't even hear what it sounds like right now. Uh, I'm going to have to play back the video after the fact. But so in terms of volume, regardless of the quality, I'm seeing this not go higher than like negative 8 dB, which should be fine. But volume wise, I'm, I'm maxed out. Here, I'll show you on here. See, I'm maxed out on this display. If you look at here, that dB meter, it's all the way maxed out. Also, is this thing on? Is this playing double? Let me turn this off. All right. I think this, maybe the second one was picking stuff up. How does it sound now? I think the second one was on for some reason, even though I didn't have it pulled out. But, yeah. <laughs> NT Tech. It doesn't sound good. Oh, no. That's... Oh, no. Okay. Well, that's not a good sign then. Um, I'm going to have to, I think, test this out with my camera and uh, off the computer as well. Uh, let me see. It sounds like really budget gaming headset mic. You talking normally peaks it out. Interesting. Okay. Here, let me turn this down. This is why we're testing this live on stream. Now, it's, now it should be really quiet, but... If, if I turn the gain down on the receiver all the way, how does this sound? Aside from being quiet, is it still pretty bad quality? Very trebly. Sounds like AM radio. Ooh. Well, Fulame, if that's 
what it ends up sounding like long term because right now we're going into this just testing it uh, just on the fly right so I don't think there are any other settings I can do let me, let me try something now it's stereo okay st I'm not sure if changing it to stereo mode is going to do anything it's too quiet okay yeah, so if I max out the uh, the gain on it, then it sounds like a cheap gaming headphone mic is what you're saying, right? So yeah, I so that's it with the gain all the way down, but it's too quiet. So then as I bring it up, this is the max gain. It sounds like I'm peaking, so I'm going to have to play with this, I think, a little bit off stream if it sounds too bad. Well, dang, I actually was hoping this sounded at least decent, but we're going to switch back and I'm going to review that footage after the fact. So now we're back on the NZXT capsule. How does this sound? It should sound like every other stream, hopefully way better. It sounds harsh even when it's quiet. Interesting. Okay. Good feedback. Good feedback. Okay. Okay. I did miss a bunch of comments earlier though, so let me get back to those as I put this away back into the charging kit. Well, Fulame, we gave it a shot live on stream. Maybe there, I might have, I mean, there's the full instruction manual, but I don't know how much of the instructions is going to help me fix audio quality, right? I'm going to, I'm going to look through it after the stream and play with it a bit more, but I mean, what do you guys think? How, how good of there is a chance, how good of a chance is there that the audio quality could actually be fixed through anything like settings wise. I think out of the box, it should at least sound somewhat decent, right? Let me take this off. Well, you might need to not max out the volume on the mic, but you need to, yeah, I mean, I think boosting the, the gain in OBS also does not sound good. Usually you have to do some, usually you, you want to kind of meet in the middle for both, right? Have them both at kind of like a mid so that if you do need to adjust something on the fly, you could adjust either on OBS side or on the mic side. But I would, I mean, I boosted it on OBS side to uh, 15. So I don't just, the more gain you give it software wise, usually the lower quality it sounds because it starts picking up all the noise and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it might just be a it might just be a crappy product, but we'll see. How much do you usually add when you are recording, uh, Demon Mitt? I'm curious. I actually let, let me look at my NZX caps, uh, my NZXT capsule settings. So for the capsule, I actually they they have a gain knob actually. Uh, so I set it to zero on OBS, and then I set and then I just crank it up. The thing about the capsule is, the NZXT capsule, which one of the complaints is that it has an infinity knob. So you can just spin this thing forever. Uh, and that's what a lot of the reviewers complain about because it doesn't have like a visual indicator as to what, when you reach the max gain for the mic itself. So, yeah. You add 12 on OBS, dang. Uh, sp how do you say that? Sprixy? Spix Spixry with the channel membership join. Thank you for the join. I appreciate it. Okay, so now that we have that, let me read through the comments because I might have missed a bunch of stuff. Does it have a companion app? There could be auto gain settings on there. There's no app unless you use it with your phone, I guess. But uh, I plan to use it with the DSLR or with my computer. So... Oh, wait, where's the chat? Have we been going with no chat box on the side this entire time? I I apologize if that was the case. Hey, okay. So I did want to uh, address this. So A right here... Is Alex, who I ran into yesterday at Safeway. I went to Safeway to pick up some gumbo recipe stuff to make some gumbo. We made gumbo last night. It was very delicious. 
Um, I love gumbo, man. Like, I don't know why. It's just a very delicious, hearty soup. It's got like, we put shrimp and uh, and dewy sausage for the most part. But uh, it's got a bunch of different vegetables in it. But anyways, uh, so I was in there. I was actually at Safeway for a while because I could not find the gumbo mix. And I had to go to a different Safeway to get it. But while I was checking out in the self-checkout, uh, this person right here, Alex, approached me and said, Hey, are you Danny from Narana Budget? So uh, he is a viewer and he lives local to me because uh, that Safeway was only like, you know, eight minutes away from my house. But we were able to talk a little bit about his system and stuff like that. So um, this does not happen to me often. I if I, I can count on both hands how many times in public I have been recognized and approached by someone to say hi. Uh, we also took a picture yesterday too. Um, uh, Alex, if you have Twitter or if you're in my dis or in the Discord channel, can you submit? Can you send me that picture actually? Or you could email it to me uh at nob.neuronabudget at gmail.com just because i would like to have a i always forget when i take pictures with people i forget to ask for that picture as well because i would like to have it but yeah um alex was pretty cool we talked for a little bit um he has and i i try to remember this uh he has a pretty a system that he built during the pandemic uh and he's using it for like homeschool uses like right now but it has a 2060 super 3700x 16 gigs of RAM, so uh, what I would, like a 2060 Super and a 3700X, what would I consider that? Uh, probably because the 2060 is a little bit older, I think the 3700X is still a pretty solid CPU, but I would consider that like if anything mid-range or a little bit below what a modern mid-range is, but I mean still a very capable system, like I don't, I don't know, so long as you have components within like the last five or so years that were not the most entry level like you know talking about like a 6500 xt or like a 3050 or something uh those parts can still play modern day games decently well you know we're talking 1080p like medium settings for triple a's and stuff but a 2060 super uh they're getting pretty like very affordable now but if you want to build a budget gaming rig you can use those yeah Yeah, Alex, it was a pleasure meeting you, and thank you for, you know, stopping me and saying hi. Usually, okay, so I, I've, you know, like I said, I've met like a handful of people, probably less than 10 in public, uh, that stopped me to say hi. And I would say more often than not, I am super caught off guard, and I have no idea what to say because I'm not prepared for it compared to like if I go to LTX or if I go to like PAX or something and someone recognizes me, then I'm more prepared and I'm in the zone, right? Like I'm at a convention surrounded by nerds. I'm ready for it. But when I'm at Safeway in my scrubby, I was wearing short, uh, I was wearing sweats and a, a hoodie sweat shirt. So I was pretty scrubbed out. Uh, I wasn't prepared, but I feel like our conversation was pretty normal and I wasn't weird and awkward. So um, it, it was a very nice meeting you, Alex. And thank you for stopping to say hi. Yeah, thank you. And yes, please email it to me. Demon Mitt says the 2060 slash 2060 Super is a card I said is one of the best cards NVIDIA has released in a long time. I mean, I, I would say that it, it's hard to say, right? Had the pandemic not happened, what would have been the reputation of the 3060? NVIDIA's 60 series of cards for a long time, ex except for this latest 4060 release, has been pretty well received. Like the 760, the 960, the 1060, those were all super popular, like well-received cards. The 2060, I would agree to. 3060 was kind of plagued with pandemic problems. So with regards to pricing and av availability, it's really hard to say how, like, like what legacy is going to have. Hopefully in the used market, it's going to have a good one because they're actually pretty affordable right now. Let me take a look on, yeah, on eBay. Whoop, wrong one. Actually, no, this is the right one. But, oh, is this, what's going on? What, what's in the background there? That's not the right window. Give me one second. <laughs> Why did that get all screwed up? Um, okay. Okay. 
Yeah, what the heck? That is weird. Let me get my browser all set up again. It somehow got messed up. Uh, it's... Yeah, whoa, this is weird. Can I still go to all these pages I went to? Yeah, but the bottom part is cut off. Sure, we'll, we'll do this for now. <laughs> Yo, this transformation is so weird on OBS's side. Why are you doing this? Okay, this works. Uh, eBay. RTX 3060. You, I think the 3060 is the top of Steam now. Let's see. Lowest price. Buy it now. I just picked up a less than $20. I would say it was probably the $10 card for the two cards I picked up. Um, but Steam Hardware Survey. All right, graphics cards by manufacturer, more info. Yep, the 3060 is the top of the Steam charts, but remember not too long ago, we saw some goofiness going on with Steam Hardware Survey. But 3060 is up here, let's see, 4.9, 4.7, 4.8, 4.8, and then 6.27 all of a sudden. That's a huge jump that is a really big jump actually what the heck we we saw a huge jump at some other point in time as well yeah it, it is overlapping uh but i um i don't mind it having the other camera being in the background it's just for some reason the window was not the proper size like it sh it shouldn't have scaled itself like this. And when I resize it, it should not be centering. So I got to fix that. Uh, I'll do that off stream though. But yeah, so 3060 is actually pretty up there. But if we look at the price of it, you can get a single fan one for 180 bucks, which eh, let's say you don't want 180. You want the next cheapest one. Buy it now, of course. Uh, we're looking at 180 plus 15 shipping. So you're looking at 195 for... The Asus Duel, which is a pretty, it's one of the more entry level ones, which is fine. It's the 3060, it's not the end of the world if you don't grab like a crazy cooler or crazy fans and stuff. You don't need that, honestly, for the 2060. Um, but, I mean, compared to, to the AMD counterparts though, I mean, I think we're looking at 6600 for 20 or 30 bucks cheaper than that. Let's just look at 6600 XTs just because I don't want people saying, oh, but the 3060 is the better card. If you compare it to the 6600 XT, then that is for sure the better card between the two. But yeah, you can find 6600 XTs for 150 plus 16 shipping. So 165 yeah, it's $30 cheaper. I just pulled that number out of thin, like not out of thin air, but like I guesstimated that and I can't believe how spot on I was. 195 versus 165 ish 30 bucks Jason Whitmer really likes the 3060 used yeah let's take a look at my used market though so we look on offer up actually no let's look at everywhere RTX 3060 so we look at the what non eBay prices are this one, uh, let's see, slightly used, okay. I mean, assuming this is a real deal, 110 for 3060 XC? I mean, EVGA cards, they might hold their value given that EVGA is out of the GPU uh, market now, but I don't know. Th is this person selling anything else? They are selling, they're selling a 1660 for 100, a 3060 for 110 and then a $90 1660. Are are all these available online? It looks like this one's available online because I it says buy now here. So two of them they it looks like they're selling locally. You guys think this is real or not? I feel like this is a little too cheap. 
I would think this is not real because this person has no rating and this seems a little too cheap compared to a market reference price, but this could just be a really good deal. Boba asked, when is the next LAN? The next LAN isn't going to be until around March time frame. The next LAN party video is hopefully going to be in December. We just land a couple of weeks ago, so I got to edit that, and I'm planning on getting it out around Christmas break time frame, so that people could just binge it uh, over holiday break, and maybe get use it to get amped up for any of the land parties they might be having over holiday break, and stuff like that. But yeah, the next land party actually happening is going to be in March, and it's going to be at James's house down in uh, Tacoma, Washington. Tacoma, near Puyallup-ish. But yeah, Christmas 2024. <laughs> no, no, no. It'll be, it'll be Christmas 2023. It will be out Christmas 2023. Message the seller for a picture of the card. Well, I don't want to message this person because I'm not even... This is in Frankfurt, Kentucky. Any, any viewers near Frankfurt, Kentucky, you might be able to... Oh, wait. This one is shipping online, too. Ships for $7.99. All right, if that's the case, here's the thing, at a hunt, this is, yeah, the, all of these are shipped, okay, this is why, this is why I think this is a scam, and you can tell me if I'm uh, making sense or not, right? If you're going to be selling, all these cards are worth more than this person is listing them for. If you listed these locally, I don't care where you live, as so long as it's like, you know, it's in the US, I feel like these would move instantly. Like, if you listed a 3060, not shipping, but like in Frankfurt, Kentucky, and you were willing to meet up with a person, this would move in less than a day at $110 for a working 3060. Now, why, if, if you could sell it that easily and get cash in hand, why would you try to sell it on OfferUp where not only do you have to go through the hassle of shipping it out to the person, you have to pay seller fees. I forgot what the OfferUp selling fee is, but you have to sell, you have to like, there are fees on top of it that you have to pay to OfferUp, so you don't even get $110. You know, combined with the fact that this person has no rating, and they, it looks like they made their account still when there was kind of a GPU shortage. I think, I feel like this is a scam. 3060 fishy, or they're in the sticks in Kentucky. Even if you're in the sticks, I feel like there's mo there's enough gamers that lives in the sticks that when if you listed something this good, it would still move very fast. I don't know. Um, let me look at the profile picture. Is not going to tell me anything. They don't have any confirmed sales. I could contact them and try to buy this and have it shipped to me only to find out it's a scam. Do we, is it, is it time for an updated? Someone asked the other week when I'm going to make the next Craigslist slash offer up Facebook marketplace, basically online local marketplace scam video. And I was like, I don't know. Do I need to make another one? But just looking through this ad, given that the 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 whole shortage is over, so people might be letting their guard down with regards to like, oh, people don't need to really be scamming. Um, so I don't know. I I this smell here. Where's the poll? We're gonna run a poll because we haven't run anything yet tonight. Start a poll. This. What are people going to vote? Scam or legit? Uh, <laughs> Wait, Spring LSE says, isn't there a product code or sticker on the back you can compare the codes? To what though? I can't even read that. The picture quality is not good enough. But unless you were talking to somebody else. Um, I mean, yeah, there's a code here, but you could just take a any random image. Or you can take an image of it because you have the card, but not actually send it out. The price, 
I don't know if I doubt that they have it in hand. It's more of if they're going to send it for $110. Stuff like this and Wish.com only exists for Toasty Bros and Austin Evans to make content with. I got scammed on an offer up. Um, bet, dude, even if it's a mining card, $110 is still way too good of a price. Like, it's still way too good. So anyways, let's actually try to look for a good, like, actual 3060 that we can buy. See, if we look at... Uh, let's see, Glendale, California, $300. Humble, Texas. That's not that humble of a price, if you ask me, for a 3060. What is this? Uh, yep, it's a Zotac. Oh, this is the ugly one, isn't it? Yes, man, Zotac. I don't know what they were thinking, trying to put this, in, this shape of a card. This card is one of the not good looking cards. Let's just say that. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see what else. 79999, okay, 225. We could put, ooh, Jacksonville. Here's a Founders Edition one, 190. It ships. Look at this. This is a scam. Wait, but they're selling, what? All right, most people are saying the other one was a scam, so we're gonna end the poll. Okay, let's look at this seller. So this person has a 3060 Ti for 190. This is still kind of too cheap. 3060 Ti's are not under 200 bucks yet in on like eBay. But if we look at this seller, they just made an account August 2023. You click on it. The weird thing is they're also selling this monitor which posted 2 months ago, basically brand new has been used once. This one I don't know. This one I think seems more real because this one they're not they're not shipping it. This one you have to pick up. So they are a real person that will actually meet up with you on this sale. On this one they're willing to ship it because I guess graphics cards are small enough that you could ship. The pricing looks a little sketchy to me. But this one's factory sealed. Has it been opened brand new? The the price looks a little too good for me. But then you look at these shoes. They what are the what are Black Cat fours? Uh, oh, they're Jordans. Jordan Black. Wait, is that what these shoes are called? Black Cat Force? It doesn't even say that on the box. I know nothing about Jordans. But on the box, would it not say... Does it say Black Cat on here? Let me see. Black, Black, LT, Graphic, Graphite, Graphite Noir, Jordan Retros. So what is this? Who's a shoe head in here that could school me on what Black Cat 4 Jordans are? Those are confirmed black cats. Force gold for one thousand dollars. Oh man, we got we got some we got some sneaker heads in the house. Okay, so size ten point five. These have been worn six point five. Here's the thing though. They say it's six point five out of ten condition, so they're pretty worn. Lots of life left. Comes with OG box. Send offers, and they don't have like a shipping to you thingy on here. This person, if you want to buy this, they will meet up with you supposedly. So. With this ad and this person, I don't, it's, I would lean, like, in terms of if it was 50-50 scam versus legit, I would almost slightly lean towards being legit. Thirty-two inch Samsung G7 for two hundred dollars. Uh, I didn't even take a look at actually what the whole monitor was. Is this that super ultra wide thing? Oh no, it's just a huge uh, 190 basically brand new has been used once. Where do these go for? Samsung RCG 7s 800 bucks. Oh, okay. Well, there there goes that. Okay so Let's talk about what's going on here on this ad, right? Because this one, they're not offering to ship to. They're offering to meet in person, supposedly. But they might not even actually be uh, willing to meet in person. And I, I ran into this before. Yeah, so Jason uh, hit the nail right on the head. You contact them, they ask you to ship it, and they will pay via Zelle. And during my video that I did the whole scam things, 
I came across some people like this when they were trying to get rid of like a th RTX 3080. They had it for listing, not shipping. But as soon as I contacted them, they're like, oh, I'm not in town right now. If you could send me payment, I could ship you via FedEx or something after the fact. So, uh, after, I guess after looking this monitor up and seeing that it's supposed to be $800, everything is weird though, because, so they're listing this at about a quarter of the price, right? 190 out of 800 is about a quarter of the price. These Black Cat 4s, I know it's in worn condition, but people are saying these are worth $1,000, I guess in good condition, but for 210 this one, I'm not a sneakerhead, so this could get by me, but even, so you got something that seems a little underpriced for worn shoes very underpriced for a basically brand new monitor and then kind of underpriced 3060 ti these are going i i mean i found mine and on ebay these are going for around 230 240 so 190 isn't like the end of the world you know crazy low prices but it is low enough for me to question so i don't get what the seller is doing they've got something that could be reasonable see for sure not reasonable and then this one is kind of questionable because it has to do with conditions so yeah n2 tech says i live about 70 miles from from where's this person at oh from jacksonville uh and, but too easy to check it out yeah um yeah maybe it's I'm gonna write it down. Maybe let's make another fun scam video. Uh, all right. So that that's on the back burner to do. I would ask to meet up for that GPU. Yeah. So the thing about these these sellers, yeah. I mean, look at the August twenty twenty three. This person's account is brand new. Uh, there there's like a less than 1% chance this any of these ads are legit but with um with these sellers actually can I ask dang it here I'm gonna ask on an offer up right now let's see if we can get this person to respond live on stream uh no 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 no, no. ask okay let me see if I can log into my offer up without doxing myself. Actually, I think I can. So let me do that real quick. Ooh, I don't even know what account I'm on. <laughs> uh, let me see. Okay, that one. I'm on that one. Nope, that's not the password. Yo, whoever's sending the hearts, thank you. It warms my heart. Oh no, I'm about to be locked out if I can't get this right. Uh-oh. No, 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 I don't want that. Uh, let me see if I can sign in with, with Gmail. Alright, I'm in. I am in like Flynn, baby. Alright, so we got a message going with them. We'll see what they say. He will respond by saying he's out of the country at a military base and his aunt is back home selling his good. Yep, that is another one. That is another one of the methods that these people use. So I messaged this. Let's see if we get a response by the end of the stream. <laughs> Mute when typing in password. I logged in with Google, so it... Uh, I will actually know. I... I logged in with it, but it still got my password because this is an incognito window. But don't worry, no one's going to guess my email and password. But thank you for looking out, though. If someone did guess my password and what email it was linked to, I would be so impressed. Now, what if instead, what if I showed this view when I was typing in my password? Ooh, that would have been that would have been bad, but I didn't do that. I am not currently scout. I am not currently using the full lame X5. The full lame, from what we've tested so far, is actually a pretty lame mic. Uh, the sound quality was horrible. I'm gonna need to look through the instruction manuals, make sure I didn't do anything stupid. But out of the box configuration and settings, 
you could you could go back earlier to the stream and check out the sound quality. It was bad. It was either too quiet or when I upped the gain, it was very. According to everybody, it sounded like a cheap uh like radio. I was sent it though. So yeah, I was sent this to like uh to use and I guess provide links for and do like a live unboxing and uh kind of like overview of. But yeah, um. We'll see, because I would I would like to have a good wireless mic to use for streams moving forward and with my uh, for my content. But um, out of the box, it was not good. So okay, let's go back to here. So now you can see. Oh man, now you guys can see my offer up history. Which do I want you guys to see it? I, it's okay. As you can see, I was looking up iPhones. I don't know why this Longhorns hat is in here. But I was looking for, like, is anyone already selling the iPhone 15 because they regret the decision so I can pick up a cheap one? But no, man, people are still trying to get $800 for an iPhone 13 Pro Max. The 15, you, this is used. You can get a brand new 15 Pro for $200 more. I don't know. iPhones just retain their value. It's crazy. NT Texas, Jacksonville itself is a red flag. Lots of crime in that area. I would be afraid to do a meetup. Is it? I'm, I wasn't actually aware of Jacksonville uh, in terms of like crime rate and stuff like that. Just, just come, uh, just come packing the heat. You know what I'm saying? I'm back on the NZXT capsule. I'm not on the full lame anymore. In terms of what wireless mics I would recommend, uh, in terms of any that I own, uh, none, because the one that I was using previously has issues as soon as you're like eight feet away. Uh, so that doesn't help out. This one, from my research, it looks like DJ, DJI is one of the, the best, but it's the it's like the most expensive the DJI wireless mic this thing three hundred and thirty dollars it looks pretty they're all pretty similar right they have a carrying case that has like a built in battery so you can stick it back in to charge but this one uh not that I sent a video out earlier but this one literally has eight hundred foot range I don't know why you would need eight hundred feet for the range. But it does, and it's been tested. It's crazy. But it's kind of too expensive for a mid-price. Uh, so Jason Whitmer, a.k.a. one of the mods of the channel, a.k.a. who has his own YouTube channel, he has the Hollyland Lark mic. Let me see if I can find it. I, how many do they have? What, do you know which one you have, Jason? Is, uh, is it the M1? So I've actually received emails from this company as well to for them to send me a mic but um that was a while ago and i i missed it but you have the m1 okay so this is what jason has it's 130 bucks same price as the full lame i mean it's again it's very similar wow it's the same color scheme too <laughs> black and yellow and it's what a coincidence i did not wear yellow specifically today because of this by the way i just happened to be wearing yellow but um, yeah, a lot of these mics, there, there's tons of them, right? Like, if you look up wireless mic, but, if, uh, let me do it on a different window. Dude, again, still, ch they're not changing it up. Always the lingerie. Uh, mic for DSLR. I mean, there, you could buy them as cheap as, like, $35, apparently. Rhodes is about $250. Uh, Hollyland. So if you want any of these ones that have like the charging case and the actual receiver, that's not just the one that goes directly into your phone like this, um, that can be used with DSLRs. It's a, I think they start at around, uh, yeah, a lot of them are like a hundred bucks about. Now, most of these are coming from somewhere in Asia, probably China. Uh, in terms of like their sound quality, Unless you're talking about like DJI and Rode, it's hard to get many reviews of some of these other brands from at least large content creators. There's a lot of smaller content creators that, you know, uh, review these, 
but and they do a pretty good job too but you don't get a ton of coverage from some of these other smaller brands that aren't like the majors um like deity road and uh boya is actually i have some boya i have a boya like mini shotgun mic and it's pretty much a road clone from what i've seen uh but yeah tons of options in terms of what's the best i mean amazon has what Amazon has free returns. If you order something and it is just crap quality, it's not you're not returning it unused, but I think there's a legit case of returning it and saying this does not uh, live up to the product description or something, right? Because all of these are going to say high quality. Let me see. Compatible. Okay. Perfect for a creator live stream. Perfect for creator live stream. Let me see if they say something. High quality material and smart chip. Like, yeah. So if you get these and they suck, Amazon has free returns. It said right here, it says new and unused. But also, if it doesn't match the product description, how can you tell that until you actually use the mic itself? So it's kind of like a crapshoot if you're going for some of the more random no-name brands. Consume the kids. Oh, consume the kids. I've been using the solo cast and it's been okay. Oh, wait. Uh, consume the kids. Did you mention that you are an Amazon employee by chance? But just by your comment, we don't question very much on the returns, to be honest. It sounds like you are a um, an Amazon, either Amazon or Amazon factory or Amazon warehouse employee. Are they rechargeable, replaceable batteries? All Pretty much most of these are built-in rechargeable batteries that you plug in via USB-C or micro. 800 foot range, DJI must have their drone tech. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, let's see, DJI uh, wireless mic, 800 foot range. I sent this video earlier to somebody. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, not that one. Where's that person? But yeah, someone lit took it outside and walked 800 feet away from the mic and it had oh here it is often that i get a new product in that This is pretty crazy. Like even 400 feet with sounding that clear is already amazing. So at 800 feet is when it starts getting a little bit jarble, jargled, but you can still hear what he's saying. And if 800 feet, not many people would need 800 feet, let alone 700, 600, 500, 400 feet where it sounded clear. So in terms of like my own personal research with wireless mics, DJI seems to have the most crazy range but also one of the higher qualities. Like the Rode mics, the Rode wireless mics also sound pretty good, but DJI, DJI, I think that range would be uh, more useful for just uh, like, you know, line of sight, far things, far uses. Yeah, there's zero interference, zero power lines and stuff like that. But I'm talking about like if you're if I'm using it within my own house, uh, even if the so I guess he he does have zero interference. But when you start using it in I how how do I explain this? 
the mic with the best range will likely work the best when there's interference at shorter ranges, if that makes sense. So the fact that the signal could be picked up at that long of a distance, the strength of the signal gives me more confidence than another mic when I start introducing walls or anything else that might interfere. So, I don't know. Um, this is a this is a pretty expensive mic though. It's 330 bucks. I have had it in my Amazon cart for a while. I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. It's one of those things where I'm like, I need to still want it after a month, after two or three months, and keep on thinking about it before I pull the trigger. Kind of like how I'm treating the iPhone, right? Like, yeah, when the new thing comes out and it's very new and exciting, you have that like impulse of wanting to buy it. But if you write it down or make a put it on a list or something like that and revisit it in a week, in two weeks, in a month, in two months, and you ask yourself when you revisit it, do I still have the same excitement or yearning to want this thing? And if the answer is still yes, then, you know, then you should probably make the purchase. But if you revisit it and you're like, oh yeah, no, that was totally, I only wanted it in the moment because it was like, it just released. But now I haven't even given it thought over the last month or two then then it's a sign that you probably don't need to buy it. Wait, you see, wait, what are we talking about? You see the optimization lines coming through the text on the viewers posts. Line is there lines? What are we talking about now? Do I still want the, I mean, the, the 15 Pro or the iPhone 15 in general only came out like, what, a week and a half or two weeks? How, how long has it been out now? It's not, I have not like sat and stewed on it for long enough to make, it's an expensive phone, right? We're talking like close to a thousand dollars, depending on if there's tax or depending on what model you get. This is not something where I will just quickly make a decision in a week or two. So we might just keep on revisiting this iPhone conversation for a while until I either decide like that I'm not going to get it or we go pick it up. But yeah. Uh, okay. So multiple people are saying, wait, were you saying about the optimization lines coming through the text on the viewers post? Are we, were you talking about the video or are you talking about something from my stream? What phone do I have now? I have the one. Oh no, this isn't it. This is, this is my old one plus six, uh, that I just use for. Um, just like, you know, I can use it as a webcam or I can just use it as a spare phone. Uh, also when I travel to Asia, I use this phone. I take my less expensive phone, uh, when I go out of the country so that should I lose it, it's not my more expensive, important phone for a reason. But, um, my phone is the one plus, let me make sure there's nothing important showing on here. I have the one plus eight, uh, pro, which I bought. Uh, it's a two years ago now, but it's a one plus eight. It's a blue one. It has a crack on the bottom. Oh, let me see, see if I can show this on here. Cause this is a pretty good quality camera, but yeah, so I bought it from the person It has a crack. So I got it for a pretty nice discount. Um, but yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not a crazy old phone, but, um, I don't know. Just. USB-C on the iPhone is an exciting time, so. I'm also, is anyone playing Monster Hunter now by chance? <laughs> I've been playing more mobile games for when I'm just sitting and chilling and not in front of the computer. So just mobile games run so much better on phone, on iPhones, I feel, than Android. I don't know why. Well, I, I, I kind of do know why. It's kind of like why apps run better on it, so. Kevin Ngo says, I'm still rocking the OnePlus 7 Pro 4.5 years. Dang, it's been four and a half years since that one released already. I guess they're getting ready to release a 12 soon. Yeah, it is e easier to optimize. If anything, iPhones probably last longer in terms of feeling newer um, over time. But yeah, um... Sending videos that aren't complete crap quality, all those things. 
Certain countries, you take a cheap phone because they seize them. You mean like the country seized them or like the tour or not the tourists, but like the pickpocketers and stuff. Because that's why I took a cheap phone when I went out of the country or and just on the off chance I lost it for whatever reason. Right. Um, I didn't want to lose my main phone because like when I because I'm using a different SIM card, too, when I'm there. So it's not like I have to uh, like lose my SIM card as well, which, you know, when when is AT&T is. Is AT&T still on SIM cards? I'm not on AT&T. I'm on Cricket Wireless, which is kind of like a branch off of AT&T. But, like, can we just go to, like, away from SIM cards? <laughs> what what carriers don't use SIM cards anymore? It's, Verizon's not hasn't been using SIM cards for a while, right? But is T-Mobile doing that now, too? No SIM card? Jason Wimmer says, I'm going to China next month, and I'm taking my 14 Pro Max. You guys are paranoid, lol. I mean, let's hopefully you return with that 14 Pro Max, Jason. Also, Jason, do you wish you would have waited for the iPhone 15 to come out? Like, do you have any buyer's regret or buyer's remorse on getting the 14 Pro iPhone 14 Pro Max? It's not about the carrier. Oh, is it about the phone? Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. This is how little I have changed phone plans or have upgraded phones. Um, but it, it's about the phone. New iPhones have eSIM. Interesting. So I would get eSIM too, regardless of being on Cricket. Huh. I have... Yeah, see, I thought... So Geek Squad says, I have T-Mobile, so I have SIM card. Okay, so it, it sounds like it is the, the whole phone thing. You can say that about everything you buy. Next thing is always better. No, 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 no. But this is a pretty big difference. I think between like the 12 and the 13 and the 13 and the 14 wasn't that big of a deal. But come on, man. USB-C? Am, am I, is it just a bigger deal to me to have USB-C on a phone than to other people? Like, that's something you just cannot change. I guess you can't change anything about the phone. Like you can't upgrade the the storage or memory easily. I guess, but still, USB C is it, just like to me. That's like the biggest. If the i if the iPhone 15 or Pro or Pro Max, whatever, released without USB C, I wouldn't even be considering right now. The only reason I'm considering switching to iPhone is USB C, along with the fact that yes, it does have good camera. It does iOS is like a good operating system, things like that. But it was the USB-C that like tipped me over the line. Well, see, it, you're, but Jason, you have your Steam Deck and your Switch and your power banks and maybe some headphones. I feel like you probably have a lot of USB-C devices where would it have been nice to also just have your phone be a USB-C to have that one single cable that just works with everything. Jason's crying on the inside, guys. He's trying to keep he's trying to play it cool now, but he he's crying on the inside that he didn't wait for the 15. I I, I know Jason. I met up with him in person. I could read his thoughts. 15 USB-C is slower than the 15 Pro. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think having slow USB-C is still better than Lightning. <laughs> Nob is Pegasus confirmed. You talking about Maximilian Pegasus? Wait, did he read Minds with his Millennium I? What did he? Yeah, he did read Minds. That's how he knew what cards people were gonna play. And then Yugi did that trick. Anyone know what I'm talking about right now? Uh, <laughs> how did Yugi do the trick? Oh, he switched between Yami Yugi and normal Yugi so that it was like there was two different players playing the game and then Pegasus couldn't read his mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about Yugi right now. <laughs> Casey Walls. Danny, have you heard of the carrier Visible? Sorry, I just saw you say uh, have a good night, but I missed your other message. 
What did Casey Wall said? Even even though you're leaving, we can still address this. Go with Visible. I've not heard about Visible. It's talking deep Yu-Gi-Oh stuff right now. <laughs> I know, right? All right, let's talk. About, let's look at Visible. All right. My phone, this is why I stick with Cricket. I'm just going to say, we're going to look at Visible, but we're going to take a look. It's an MB, oh, it's an MBNO of Verizon. Okay. Hopefully that means Visible only allows one line. Oof. Okay. Right now, I have a $125 phone plan with five people on it. It is unlimited everything. Unlimited talk, unlimited text, as Canada and Mexico coverage. Um, and because I have five people on it, it costs me 25 bucks a month for unlimited everything. Talk, text, data with Canada and Mexico. It is very, it would be very hard to find another carrier that has a better deal than that. And we have good AT&T coverage in Seattle. I know depending on where you live, some places have better like T-Mobile coverage, some places have better Verizon, some places have better uh, AT&T. In Seattle, the towers for AT&T are really good. And Cricket being uh, an MVNO of AT&T, I get really good coverage. So I have good coverage, unlimited everything at $25 a month. How how am I supposed to beat that with anything else? We'll take a look at Visible, but I'm, anytime I see a phone plan that has unlimited everything for a single line, it's usually at least 50 bucks from what I've found, but let's see what they have. I looked at Google Fi, but Cricket is still cheaper for me. Yeah, I, I looked at Google Fi too. I would I consider Google Fi, but Cricket is just way too cheap. Telling people you use Cricket is like the same as having green bubbles. What is green bubble? Oh, green bubbles. You're talking about the text. I, th I thought you were talking about some kind of other bubbles, like some bubble guts or something. But okay, Two, 25 a month wireless with zero hidden fees. Oh, okay. Well, this isn't too bad. One line wireless, unlimited plan. Okay. No hidden fees. Bring my phone. Let's take a look at this. What do we got? Check phone compatibility. Okay. Get started. Two unlimited plans to meet your needs. You'll pay 25 a month for visible or... 45 month for visual plus here let's just get started Let, let's go through uh, uh i gotta put in my i i m e i okay give me one second let me see if i don't i don't is having your i am your i am yeah is that the one that is unique to your phone or is that the one that's not your phone model right i don't want other people out there having my i m e i right Remember, I'm not a mobile guy, so uh, a lot of this unique to phone. Okay, yeah, that's what I kind of figured. Where is this at? How do I even get it on this phone? I think I have to like hold some numbers down or let me see. Danny, do you watch TV? What's your favorite genre? What is my favorite genre of TV? I don't know if I have a favorite genre of TV, to be honest. Um, so enter the code pa uh, star pound zero six pound. Okay, I'll do that. In terms of genre, like what have I been watching lately? Let's see. Kengan Asura newest season came out. I binged that in like one night because they're very short episodes. I, I mean, I watch a fair amount of anime on like Netflix or whatever streaming services. Um, I, I'm, I just, I'm getting through season two of Suits still. Um, what else do I, I'm trying to think of what I watched recently. I, I watch whatever is on the streaming services and what people say are good shows, right? I, I can't classify it in terms of genre if I, if, unless I thought about it more, I think. I've never, I never gotten to Doctor Who for some reason. Star, Pound, Zero Six pound wait zero six pound Sorry. okay there's my i have two why do i have two imeis huh whatever i i think it's because this is a dual sim phone but i don't know if that has anything to do with it <laughs> okay let me put this in like I'm pretty sure it's, wait, it's not compatible. My phone is not compatible. Huh. So I couldn't use this even if I wanted. 
Are OnePlus is not compatible with Visible? Is it because it doesn't have eSIM? And yeah, so I couldn't even get it if I wanted. Yeah, it might be eSIM. That's probably why. So can I look at the plans though? Let's look at the plans. Cause if I got get the new okay, visual plus versus normal. Yeah, unlimited talk, text, data, 5G and 4G LTE. Okay. What is better about the Visual Plus plan? You get the premium network experience. You get 5G ultra wideband, huh? What is that even? Ultra wideband fastest. Okay, yep. Premium network. Get 50 gigs of premium data every month. After 50, it's heavy traffic. Okay, but if you don't have that plan, when does your data get throttled? They don't even say. I mean, this is probably similar to what I'm having with Cricket, though. I, I'm not getting no premium experience. So, okay. Mobile hotspot, unlimited, extra spam protection, okay. Hmm. For 10 bucks more, this actually doesn't seem like that bad of a deal. If you get noticeably faster internet. You tried both plans and couldn't tell the difference. Ah, okay. The reason... Visible is better than Cricket is because their plans come with unlimited hotspot. Uh, I've actually not needed to use hotspot that often or ever, actually. I, anytime I've used hotspot, I'm trying to think of it. Would be like if I'm somewhere and my laptop, I wanted to connect to the hotspot on my phone. But I mean, that's, that's still for the same price. That does sound better than Cricket. Um, I've never heard of Visible, though. Up till now, so thank you for bringing it to my attention. I'm actually gonna bookmark this page and l do more research into it. So the issue with me though, and maybe this is an issue with anybody else that's on my plan. So I have myself, my brother, my mom, and two other friends on my Cricket plan. I fully loaded it up because that's how you get that's how you get the price down to twenty five dollars a person. Um, dropping my phone plan means that they're all gonna have to go find whatever the heck else <laughs> so that sounds like a them problem at the end of the day but um i mean visible actually set looks like really good the fact that you can have like a single line and not have to try to load up a plan and not have to have people people venmo me every month for the phone plan that i carry <laughs> that I carry four other people. I, not my mom. Me and my brother pay for my mom's phone plan. But my brother and my two other friends Venmo me pretty much uh, to be on my phone plan. Casey Wall says, Danny, I have a 5G Nighthawk router that I have visible, a visible SIM card in. Uh, wait, do you just use visible... And not have like a traditional uh, internet service provider? Are you saying that you basically, with your router, uh, get internet and Wi-Fi into your house through Visible? Oh! For 35 bucks a month? And you're saying you've, getting, you've hit 2 gigs? Has anyone else, anyone else there do that? Th that sounds kind of like a pretty crazy hack. Wait, five, but he's he's getting speeds up to two gigs. Five G home internet is a thing, but I I've actually I don't know if I know anyone who's who does that. Anyone in any of the viewers out there? Anyone in the comments doing that aside from Casey Walls? I think so. What gets me is. Normally, I would have imagined a plan like this be in like the $60, $70, $80 dollar range, which would be the traditional cost of what, you know, getting Comcast or whatever traditional ISP is. But if you can do this for 25 to 35 and get really fast speeds, it's probably not consistent though. I would imagine it's not consistent because you said you have pinged two gigs before, but that doesn't seem like a always around the clock thing, right? Verizon has 5G home internet. Look up 5G ultra wideband Verizon speed test. It's crazy. Okay, I got I got to look those up. I've never actually considered it. Um, 
how much would one have to bend <laughs> to be included on my plan? So everyone Venmo's me $25 to be on my cricket plan because the, the bill is five people for $125. But cricket maxes out at five people. They don't give any further discounts, and I don't think they even allow you to have more than five people on a single family plan. But the, this whole visible thing is on my radar now, and uh, I might actually look into this. I'm not going to drop my... I have Zipply Fiber. I'm not going to drop my like direct hardline internet for this. But for my phone plan, I would consider this like heavily. They are legit. This is this is pretty cool. Okay. All right. Uh, I missed some of the other comments. So let me take a look. I Ismail Alonzo says, OnePlus are great phones, but still a very small market compared to... Yep, very much so. Shoot, can we even look that up? OnePlus... OnePlus phone market share. Can you even, like, get... Uh, huh, US phone market, smartphone market share. I mean... This is... I don't know in terms of the data how uh, accurate this is, right? But let me see if there's any other websites that seem more... Uh, legitimate unless you guys know of a better website uh, <laughs> gizmo china app uh, okay smartphone share linkedin okay what is this linkedin article global smartphone strategies at tech insights okay is this any more trustworthy one plus stay in the top okay They don't actually give the the number for OnePlus. They give the relative to the percentage last year, but I'm talking about just the, the percent. Oh. Um, this is Oppo, but that's like all their other phones and not the... Because one, uh, OnePlus is like a part of Oppo, right? They're under the same parent company, but that doesn't tell me what the market share of people using actual OnePlus phones are. But Oppo has a market share of... Wait, Samsung is... What is this? Why am I... Ha Why do I have to look at this tiny picture up here? Why do they not actually give stuff down here? So what is this? Quarter 1, 2023. Apple chips less than Samsung. Being a not phone guy and not following the phone market and trends... I would say I am surprised by this just because in the, is this, no, this is global. Okay. I lied. I lied. Maybe if it was in the U S I would be really surprised because iPhones kind of dominate the U S but in the global market, people don't care about iPhones as much as they do like, uh, Android phones. Right. So CPPC Texas T-Mobile towers are pretty whack in my area, especially if you want to travel and go down back roads. AT&T Verizon is the only way if you travel. Yeah, T-Mobile uh, around me is also pretty bad. That's why I've stuck with Cricket for so long. Because for the longest time, it was that, for me anyways, Verizon was like the carrier that was the most premium. Uh, it cost the most, but it had the best service and range for where I live. And then you had T-Mobile being like the most dirt cheap plans. And then you had AT&T, which used to be singular wireless. I used to have singular when it was that. But um, singular was kind of like the middle ground, right? It was like a little bit more expensive than T-Mobile, but had better coverage. But uh, then Cricket came out and that's why I went from AT&T to Cricket because it was just like it had T-Mobile prices with AT&T reach and and uh uh what's it called and and signal i guess yeah so um with regards to this i feel like i remember when i first got the one plus like the one plus one and then the one plus two anytime people ask me what phone you have and I told them, they would say, what? What's that? I've never heard of that. Remember, this is back in like 2014, 2015. But now when I tell them I have a OnePlus, people actually know what it is. Like you can 
when you go to stores, they have OnePlus phones in the store sometimes too. So like, uh, it they've been around for long enough now that they are actually like recognized from people, you know, like even from like iPhone users who don't know anything but iPhones, like my friends and family and stuff who aren't phone people at all, who don't follow phones. All they have is an iPhone for the, since the beginning of time. And, um, yeah, they even know what a OnePlus is and they've heard of it. So what? Yep. Kevin, same here. I had the original OnePlus OG back in 2014. I, on one of the OnePlus phones, did you, did you, you needed an invitation. Okay. I bought my OnePlus One invitation. That I remember the story now, how it worked out. OnePlus One, if you wanted to get the phone, especially on release, you had to have an invitation. I don't remember how those invitations got given out, but I did not have an invitation. People were selling the in invite code to buy the OnePlus One on eBay. Let me see if I can find my email of it, how much I paid for this thing. But um, <laughs> I bought an invite code to buy the one plus one i think it was like 15 bucks or something probably then because i had the one plus one i got an automatic invite to buy the one plus two that's how that worked let me check my my gmail account and see one plus where was it at one plus ebay confirmation here it is on July 31st, 2014, I bought this. I bought it for $22 on PayPal. Holy. <laughs> Let me blur out my, my information here. Come on. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, seller, item number, transaction number. Okay. Let me save this. <clears throat> did you get NT Tech? Did you get banned? Banned from what? You did not get banned from anything, I don't believe. Martin is in the house. Martin says your T Mobile is really good. Oh, yeah, I think for my house, T Mobile is fine. When I say in my area, I'm talking about sometimes when me and Melissa go out. Her phone drops signal really bad, just like locally, and my AT&T is pretty good. But in our house, I think T-Mobile is fine. Uh, just like in the general Seattle and Tacoma area over the years. Um, people that I know that have T-Mobile, or like Melissa even, um, she, her signal is generally worse than mine. Alright, here we go boys and girls, and everything in between. Look at this eBay order details. Uh, I guess this is not over nine years ago. That look, one plus one invite for the 60, man, 64 gigabytes at that point in time. I think that was like the most storage I've ever had in a phone. Sandstone black unlocked. Like they put the whole description as if it was the phone, except they threw invite in here. And I paid $22. Remember when eBay didn't have tax? I paid exactly what the listing was. $21.99. And that is exactly what I checked out. That is the total price right here. No tax eBay. Those were some good days. NT Tech. If some of your comments are not showing up in chat, I don't know if that's the slow mode, but I, I'm pretty sure you are not banned. And I don't think anyone, unless one of the mods... I don't think he said anything that would have gotten you banned or shadow banned. It might just be YouTube slow mode doing its thing. Ba yeah, back in the day. <laughs> this isn't even that back in the day. This was like nine nine years ago. Um, but yeah, that was ever since then. I've only used one plus phones. I think we might be breaking the streak though. I've not been as excited for any of the the newer one plus phones to be honest. You pay nine bucks for an invite code for your cousin? Nice. Oh yeah, so late that was later on probably when it wasn't as like 
or after like the hype that maybe died down a little bit and they became a little bit more readily available yeah Casey Wall says, did anyone else take advantage of Sprint's free year of service and then sign up for the Kickstart plan that was 15 a month? Man, we this whole time, I haven't even mentioned Sprint at all just because, I don't know. Sprint has been around forever, I feel like. But they're not, at like, when I think of, like, the big three, I think of Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, where I live. Sprint... Is I know they're like a fourth very large carrier. I I think I know like one person who has Sprint, and over the years they have not said good things about being under Sprint. And I obviously you know Sprint could be better now, but um, I I I know nothing about all the different carriers. Sprint Sprint is better than Cricket. Ah, T-Mobile owns Sprint. Sprint is gone. Yeah, see all these. Companies getting like bought up by other bigger companies and stuff like that. I don't. I haven't followed all of that over the years, but um, uh, NT Tech says, "What's your cash app so we can donate to your iPhone 15 Pro Max fund?" No, no need for that. Don't. If anything, donate to UFD Tech Brett, which I totally said this was going to be a short stream, but somehow I ran over two hours by this point. So. Um, we're going to end stream in the next 5 or 10 minutes, but in the meantime, I'm going to go over, if you guys have not yet, uh, what the heck, why is, uh, where's, how come incognito, uh, how is that not already, like, in the history? So, if you guys have not followed and subscribed, go support the Cannonball run for 2023 they're what time is it they're on the they're probably still east coast i would imagine so it's about 10 p.m there do they put a local time on the stream but uh yeah go over there and show but actually if you guys could go over here and say nerd on a budget sent me here i would appreciate that just to show brett some love um he is driving right now and it is nighttime. Does the he's riding in the F one fifty Lightning? Does that thing have any sort of late like autopilot that makes it any easier to drive? They're in Ohio now. Okay, but please go over to Twitch, send him love from the Nob stream, and I will be joining and check out that stream soon. Too funny. I just watched. The movie Cannonball Run. I've actually never watched that Cannonball movie. I didn't even know what the Cannonball Run was until Brett started doing it. And then I looked it up and then found out what it is. It's an older movie. Uh, so I need to find that where they're streaming that. Uh, what what platforms. And uh, check that out. Hey, I see, I see Kevin go in the chat. Jack Bauer. <laughs> yes yeah, so go over there flood the chat please <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you and if you guys watch the stream, I did do a segment that is not available anywhere on YouTube. It's a private listed video, but there is a video that they will play throughout the thing. They're, they're going to play it from multiple creators, but this year they asked the question, when have you seen a piece of tech profoundly change someone's life? And, um, and yeah, uh, I, I answered that question. It was like a four minute video, so you could see it over there. Okay. They have 60,000. Yes, Shauner, that is a good point. They're giving away so much stuff. Also, if you guys live anywhere for... Shauner, I have not... I've been looking. Do they have everything mapped out 
as to where they're going to stop and have they released that or are they only saying it on stream so you have to pay attention if you want to meet up with them in person um or like have they said ahead of time so people can plan out the different charging stations they're going to because if you go and meet them in person you can get a free not custom ltt screwdriver but they're giving away ltt stubbies LTT stubby screwdrivers as well as the black and orange regular size screwdrivers. These are like what 60 and 80 dollar screwdrivers. Th they're really nice screwdrivers by the way. But Linus helped sponsored this year, like he does every year, and they're giving these away to people who meet up with them in person. They know where they're gonna be, but don't have exact items. Okay. Times, yeah, yeah. You're going to be meeting them in De Denver, going to grab a stubby. Nice. Yeah, I, I mean, it does. It wouldn't make sense for them. It would not make sense. Whoa, they're driving through a construction zone with some police lights earlier. Yeah, it would make They're They're heading to, to California. So it doesn't make sense for them to come and stop by Seattle. But if they came and stopped by here, uh, I would totally like meet up with them. That would be pretty awesome. But... Unfortunately, we are on the exact opposite end of the coast. Brian Switzer says he loves the stubby they made. I mean, let's let's make some let's make use of uh this a little bit more. So here's the stubby. So in the little uh storage section, it only has one row of bit storage. But other than that, like, does the clicks come through? Oh, it does. But yeah, in terms of the size comparison, you're looking at, uh, oh, dropping stuff over here. I mean, look at the size difference between these two. It's like me versus the guy she tells me not to worry about. Me, the guy I'm not supposed to worry about, right? I mean, come on. Thanks for your support on Cannonball, for sure. Yeah. Um, it. I mean, Brett, what he does for his son and his family, given the platform that he has, it, it's a pretty amazing thing. Like, every year they raise... I'm, tr I'm trying to go back. If there was a year that they... They've raised over 100000 if not 200000 for the last couple of years but i'm trying to think back i don't remember how much they've raised every single year but they've raised like a lot so uh the fact that you know he's using his he's doing he's doing what every good dad should do right everything in his power to try to help his son out uh but in the process he's also helping out many other families uh with children with this rare genetic disease and the thing about it compared to other uh diseases is that this is so rare that there's not much money or funding that goes towards it because like statistically such a low amount of people are born with it or have it that there's not as much awareness or funding that is thrown at it compared to something say like cancer right so what you know him and anybody else who's raising money for this it's is doing using the platform that they have uh it, it's pretty amazing to see so The for do you know what year they started? Because in the last last year and the year before, I don't remember the exact year they started the cannonball, but I would have to go on Twitter and, and look that up. But yeah, I think the first few years it was the, the amount of money is like was like peanuts compared to what they have in the last uh few years. Big Booty Unicorn. For some reason, I really like that name. Big Booty Unicorn. What's good, gang? We're about to end stream soon here, though. I'm just trying to get people to go over to the Cannonball stream over on UFD Tech. Why did I not... I need to pin that. How did the pin... The pin got removed when I did the poll.
The third cannonball and the sixth charity stream. Is it only the third one? Cannonball is based on the movie. So it's based on a movie about like this uh, some illegal race uh, across the country. Oh, what year was this? 1976. So not black and white, but uh, I would consider this pretty old school. <laughs> um, but it's starring what Burt Reynolds, right? He's the main star. Or is he not? Wait, who's the main cast on this? I thought Burt Reynolds was in this one. I've never seen this movie, but I need to watch it because of all the cannonball talk. No, this is Carquake. What the heck? Why are they giving me Carquake? Yeah, yeah, what is this? So on this page for ca Cannonball... Uh... Was it Cannonball? Oh, sorry. I, I was at the wrong movie. Yeah, yeah, Cannonball Run. Oh, this one's not that old. Cannonball Run is, yes, Burt Reynolds. Uh, this is 81. The other one was just Cannonball with also cars and stuff. Sad to see that a sick cat, what sick cat raised more money than more worthy people? Was there a sick cat in social media recently that raised a ton of money? A Russian cat raised 50 grand. Whoa. Brett and team are going to raise well over 50 grand. So the cat's not going to raise more money than Brett. I'm sure of that. They're definitely going to go well beyond 50 grand. But yeah, it's kind of crazy uh, how GoFundMe's and how viral some of them can get and how much money they can raise. No flip PCs with other YouTubers and donate the money. The whole PC flipping thing, I don't know. Um, I I don't think my channel has ever been focused on PC flipping. Like that's that's never ever been my shtick or like my like talking points or whatever. I build a lot of systems and like I've given some away uh, and stuff like that. But the whole PC flipping, I've never really been into because. I don't know. Just charging more for my labor. I know I should charge for the work that I put into source parts and stuff like that. But for making content, I, I've never been super attracted to that. As like, oh, how much money can I make? And teaching people how to make money flipping. People can learn how to build computers watching my stuff. But if they want to get into the art of flipping and stuff, there's many other tech tubers who already cover that. Pretty well. I think Zach is probably one of my closer like YouTube friends who who cover who does a lot of that kind of stuff. But in terms of like with other YouTubers, that's another thing that's like just difficult to do. Just collaborations. I know, like f from a viewer standpoint, watching collaborations are probably pretty cool to see like multiple YouTubers get together and work on something. But from a creator standpoint, collaborations are such a horrible return on investment. Like, I'm talking, like, pretty much all of my content creator friends, like, in the tech fam. So that's, like, Zach Sector, Oz Talks Hardware, Toasty Bros, Mark Scatterbo, and stuff like that. We've all talked about this. We agree that collaborations always require so much more work. And the benefit from it for us like how much time we have to put into it. We never see like the growth. We never see like the cross traffic viewership. It, it It's always 
it's n almost never worth it. The reason we sometimes still do that is because it is fun and stuff like that. But there's a reason why you rarely see people on our size of a scale collaborate. Now, when you talk about Linus and stuff like that, yeah, p million, million plus YouTubers, when they collaborate, it's always like great. And there probably is more cross viewership stuff. But when you talk about medium sized content creators, even someone as big as like Greg Salazar, like we talked about it during L LTX, like I've collabed with uh, Ozzy and Greg on a budget PC build video. And um, like the viewership, like crossover is never like, it's almost like we just released a video without the collab. So yeah, un unfortunately for small and medium sized channels, collabs, it makes the workload like way more difficult because you have to coordinate with someone else who has a way different schedule plan than you and everything like that. But then at the end of the day, when it comes to viewership and monetization and like YouTube revenue, it's if sometimes it's actually not as good as our typical content. Like me doing a collaboration can sometimes get less views than like a typical video, like a ride along pickup video that I do solo. So yeah, that that's my take on it. I'm not saying I would never do collabs moving forward, but I, I mean, I did a collab somewhat recently. I teamed up with a couple of other, like three other small content uh, three other small channels and we did a $400 build off type of video and then we sold those builds on Jawa basically for the same price that we got the parts for so our labor and part searching was free um, and that video basically performed the same as if I just did a $400 budget build video you know yes I, it's okay, so last thing before I go, because we're, you know, talking about phones and stuff. The Pixel has always been a phone that I've been like, man, the pure Android experience and directly from Google itself, that, you know, they have good camera quality. I have kept my eyes on, like, the Pixel 6 when that released, the Pixel 7 and stuff like that. But I always went back to OnePlus just because of familiarity. I, you, could, you could say I am a OnePlus simp or a shill or whatever uh blind one plus fan because it's worked for so many years which is funny because when people say that about graphics cards they get a bunch of crap for it like nvidia it's always worked for me so why change that's that's me with one plus but re regarding the pixel 8 pro all my phone news comes from notifications from mkbhd and dave 2d they are my two like guys that i go to watch content on youtube when new phones release and yes i did see both MKBHD's and Dave 2D's new uh, Pixel 8 overviews today. They didn't do the full reviews. I I mean, the phone looks great, but my for some reason, my mind is kind of set on the iPhone 15 if I do pick up a new phone. My phone still works fine. I do not need this, but if I could and then just sell this one off or something or have this as a backup, then I would, but we'll see. What is the best phone for a musician? Dude, I don't even know. What even constitutes a good phone for a musician? Good recording capabilities? I don't know. But all right, you guys. Uh, wait, Casey Wallace says, I flipped three this week and made 800 bucks profit. Three, dang. Yeah, I mean, doing PC flips, accounting for your labor, and if you got really good deals on stuff that you could kind of upcharge a little bit on the parts, making about like two to 300 a build is not super unreasonable. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've never been, I've been into building PCs, not necessarily the flipping. I usually just sell the builds to people I know that are looking for PCs. Um, I, I never like look to make it a business where like every single week I'm constantly looking for new parts so that I could put a build together and try to sell on Facebook marketplace or offer up or stuff like that. Cause if I did sell, I would sell locally. Just, I don't want to deal with shipping, like shipping insurance damage. If anything happens, like I'd rather just meet up get the cash and then be on my way and not worry about it. But yeah. Um, all right. That's going to be it for this stream. Thank you everyone for tuning in as always. Make sure to check out 
the Cannonball stream. I will be over there in the chat after this stream. Uh, so hope everyone has a great rest of the week and weekend coming up. And yeah, uh, I'm trying to get a video out by this weekend, but it depends on if I can finish it in time. We'll see, but I do have some YouTube Shorts content. I've been trying to work on the YouTube Shorts stuff, so uh, be ready for some of that to release. But yeah, have a great rest of the week, and we can come up for everyone, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.